Okay, in the last video we created our real-time model, which is basically the information that gets stored in the data store. Um, in this case, it's going to be storing our player score. Now we're going to create another script, which is going to be the real-time component. So if we refer, refer back again to uh, the normal core documentation. We just worked on creating the real-time model, which is what's stored in the data store. The real-time component is basically the controller, which basically listens for changes to um, the score, updates that in the game object or the, or the view, and updates that uh, in the model. So we're going to go ahead and create a new script inside Unity. We'll call this player data script. Player data script. So let's go ahead and go inside that script. And we're not going to need either of these methods again, so we'll go ahead and delete those. And because we're going to be tapping into some of the real-time methods, let's add in that library. So unlike the last time with the uh, model, we added in real-time and then we added in serialization. We're just going to end it with adding in normal.realtime. Similar to the player model that we created, the player data model, we didn't want to inherit from the model behavior, uh, and in fact, it didn't inherit from anything, but we do want uh, this script to inherit from the real-time component. Oops. Uh, class there, so we'll inherit some of the methods and access to the variables that are in that class. So we're gonna go ahead and create a, a couple of private variables. We're going to create a reference uh, to the player data model. Now, just to point out this, um, I'm calling it player data model here in this case because that's what I called my script. If you end up calling your model script something different, you'll be creating a, a reference to a variable um, or to an object that is different, a different name. And let's go ahead and call this again underscore model. We'll create another private method, or sorry, private variable. Um, text. Now, oh, one thing I should point out is we do need to add in one additional library at the top, so let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, we need to add in, because we're going to be tapping into the UI system of Unity, we need to add in um, the UI library here. All right, so we'll create another private method called text, or of type text, and we'll just call this score text. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm going to be creating a reference when, the, when this game object is awoken, a reference to the score text because this script itself that we're creating, the player data script, is going to go right on, side, right on top of the um, text game object of the player's avatar. Um, we could create a public variable that we expose, but I'm just doing it this way. So let's go ahead and create a method, an awake method. And we're going to get the reference to the score text or game object. So we'll go score text equals get component text. And because this is going right onto the text object, um, we can simply do it uh, just a get component. Okay, so we have our um, player data model um, of, uh, called underscore model. Let's set the private. And we're going to set what's called a property. Op a property is just a way to extend the variable class. And we're going to use something called an accessor, a set accessor, uh, to be able to change that value. And so we're going to go ahead and start by typing in private. And we'll type player data model. And we'll call this uh, property, uh, we'll call it model. And we're going to use something called set, and we'll do two more curly brackets. This is going to allow us to set the value um, back to, of underscore model uh, to a particular, um, to be able to set that value. So we're going to start by adding in a couple of if statements. So we're going to add in, um, here we we'll go down here, we'll add in an if statement, uh, if underscore model does not equal null,
we're going to unregister uh, from events. So we are going to be using an event system so that when the value of underscore, or sorry, the value of uh, player score changes, uh, we'll be able to have certain actions happen. But we're going to we're going to set this up to unregister from events using the dot operator. We can uh, tap into a method called score uh, player score did change. So here's this player score variable that we set up. We can tap into a method called player score did change or an event system. Sorry. I'm going to go minus equals score did change. Now, this is going to be a, a method that we're going to create. It's not set yet, so set yet to so give us this error message. I will come back to the rest of what's going to happen inside the set accessor in a minute here. Let's go ahead and just create outside of this um, private player data model. Let's create a method. We'll, we'll create the score did change method. And because this is going to be um, the score to change is kind of tapping into the event system of um, the model system within Normcore, we need to pass a couple of parameters, player model or player data model, and an integer of value. And, and because we are with it, working with a score um, and the score player score is of integer, that's why this is set to integer. Oops. And we're going to call a method in here. So when when uh, the system detects that the score did change, it's going to fire an event. That event will trigger this method here, score did change. And we're going to call a method in here, update display score. Now again, that method's not set yet, but we'll do that in a second. All right, let's create another method here. Update display score. We don't need to pass any parameters to that. And in here, we're going to just basically, so up here above, we, we set, we initialized uh, this variable score text. We set it to uh, the get component of the text object, game object, or component, sorry. And then we're going to go ahead and go score text. Remember, if we want to change the actual content of the text field, we need to go dot text equals. And when we want to combine a string with a variable, we can use something called concatenation. And to do that, it's a plus sign. So it's not adding the two together. It's just basically combining the two. So we're going to, we're going to have this part start of it being score. And then we'll go model underscore player score. So just to recap what's happening, um, when the events are fired, that the, the actual data in the, the model, um, the player score when it actually does change, it's going to fire this event. This event will then call this method up, update display score, which will then update uh, the text element of the game object to be um, the new score. There's a bit more that we need for inside this property here. We need, a, we need a little bit more. So after this if statement, we're going to store the model. And to do that, we're just going to go underscore model equals value. And then we need to add in another if statement here. Oops. So we're going to oops, update the mesh, or sorry, update the score to match the new value. And so here we're going to call that method update display score. And then we also want to register this for events here. So register for events so we'll know if the score changes later. So again, um, we're going to tap into the player score did change. When that event is, is fired, we're going to kind of connect that with the method score did change. So now if we were to save this, we don't have the actual system yet to update the score. We'll, we'll take a look at that um, in our next video. But what we, what we have right now in place, um, each time an avatar or a player is spawned in the game, this is going to be attached to their avatar. 
And we'll keep that score. So if we take a look at Unity quickly here, it'll keep this score um, label always updated with what the score value is for that avatar within the data store. The last thing that we need to do to get this to actually work is just select the score text game object. And we just need to drop that script. Um, and actually, when I was getting this project ready, I copied it from one I had built, um, but I had deleted all the scripts. And it's, but I didn't remove that script component. So if you do see this um, when you're following along, let's just go ahead and remove that component. And let's add a new script. We're going to add in the player data script. We can just drag that over to our components over here. All right. Uh, so now this avatar is ready. If I hit save, um, it's ready to sync the score that's displayed above the player with the score that's attached to the avatar. In our next video, we'll take a look at